So let's talk about everybody's favorite thing to do in science class, some math. That's right. We're going to talk about speed. Speed, we all know, is, you know, how fast things are moving. So we've talked about that position is where you are, and that motion is a change in your position. Um, so when you move, you change where you are. All things happen in reference to time because time is always ticking. So that's also a measurement that we often take when we describe motion is how long it takes you to get somewhere in time. And then your change in position, your motion, can be um, used, measured, in distance. So we wind up with two measurements that we can use to describe speed, and that's distance and time. We need to know the distance that something is traveling and the time that it takes that journey to happen in order to figure out how fast or how speedy something is. So when we talk about units of speed, it'll, it'll help this to make a little bit more sense because we all know that when we talk about how fast something is going, especially like a car, we say things like MPH, which means miles per hour. Miles is a measurement of distance and hours is a measurement of time. So miles per hour can be written this way, where this line where we have miles over hours means per. So this is still miles per hour. That's how we would read MI over HR. Um, there's lots of different types of units, though. For another country, we might have kilometers per hour, meters per second, feet per second. We could also have like centimeters per second, which we'll see when we do some labs here in science class. So units of speed help us to understand that we need a distance and we need to divide it by a time. There are two different kinds of speed. And here's the thing, people get these really confused in science class and it winds up like, you know, completely destroying them because they don't know the difference here. So instantaneous speed is what you know when you're driving your car. You have a speedometer in your car and it has these little measurements on the outside. And as you push down on the gas pedal and you start covering more distance with each chunk of time, it will tell you that your speed is increasing. Like on here, we could be driving like 30 miles or 30 kilometers per hour. But you only have instantaneous speed in a car. So when you have a speedometer, it tells you exactly how fast you're moving right now. I have no idea how fast I was moving when I went through like the stoplight by my house this morning. It was green, by the way. But I can't remember that. Um, in order to have any kind of idea of how fast I was going, we have to calculate average speed. So let's say you leave your house at 9 and you get to school at 10. And it takes you, it's four, 4 miles away. So now we know how long it took you and your total distance covered. So total distance covered was 4 miles and how long it took you to get there, your time, is 1 hour. So we can take your distance and divide it by your time, which, you know, 10 minus 9 is 1, and we get that you traveled 4 miles per hour, which is a pretty good clip, like if you walk to school, um, or even if you rode a bike to school and you had to, like, stop off somewhere for a second. So the average speed tells us our total trip speed, but doesn't account for the fact that you might have been going faster or slower at certain points along that trip. Most people aren't going a straight 4 miles per hour for a whole hour. So let's look at a, uh, a problem here. Jerry traveled 500 miles to Los Angeles in six hours. What was his average speed? Because we don't have instantaneous speed. Average speed just means we have to calculate it. We have no idea how fast he was going 200 miles into the trip, but we know that he had 500 miles and it took him six hours to get there. So distance divided by time. Our distance here is 500 miles because miles is a unit for distance. This is where those units are so important. And time is six hours, so that's going to go on the bottom. So now 500 divided by six, and of course I picked things that I couldn't do easily in my head. Hashtag long division. So we have 500 divided by six, and you know, six means 48, and then you get to 20, and then you know, six times three is 18. La la la, we wind up with 83.3 repeating miles per hour. But here's the thing, there's no point three repeating, so we're just going to say we're going about 83 miles per hour. Now, for an entire 500 mile trip, most cars can't travel 500 miles on one tank of gas, so we probably had to stop and get gas at some point in there. 
So maybe some parts of the trip he was going a little faster, and some parts of the trip he was going a little slower, and some parts of the trip he wasn't moving at all, but his average was 83. So how about a graph? How fast did the object travel in five seconds? So we're going to go to time is five seconds, down at that bottom, and then look over here, and our position was 25 meters. Divide that by five seconds, and we get five meters per second because that unit cruises down meters divided by seconds becomes our unit meters per second. We can see all the way along here, 5 divided by 1, 10 divided by 2, etc. So that was true for the whole journey because we have that straight line. So now you can go forth and calculate. Hooray! Go smack!